She is a corporate Democrat uh, who has, in fact, along with Senator Manchin, sabotaged enormously important legislation. You just listened to a snippet of Senator Bernie Sanders CNN interview where he repeatedly dunks on Kirsten Cinema after he was asked about her decision to leave the Democratic Party. And I don't even like this being framed as a decision because really she had no choice. And we'll get to that. But he talks about why he believes she made this decision and he thinks that it's about political aspirations. Let's listen. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time uh, on Senator Cinema. She has her reasons. Uh, Donna, I happen to suspect that it's probably a lot to do uh, with politics back in Arizona. I think uh, the Democrats there are not all that enthusiastic about somebody who helps sabotage some of the most important legislation that protects the interests uh, of working families and voting rights and, and so forth. So I think it really has to do with her uh, political aspirations uh, for the future in Arizona. But for us, I think nothing much has changed in terms of the functioning of the U.S. Senate. He's not wrong. I do think that she has political aspirations and is deluded enough to believe that she could maybe run for president or governor of Arizona one day. But I think that ultimately this is about two things. One, she wants attention. And by doing this, she can get lots of attention, at least for a week or so while she's in the news cycle. But most importantly, she had no choice because the writing was on the wall. She couldn't survive a Democratic Party primary. And if she wanted to continue to have a political career, she had to pivot. A January data for progress poll found that she had a net negative 57 unfavorability among Democratic Party primary voters in her own state. And her ceiling against the potential primary challenger was 17 percent. So if she didn't do this, if she actually tried to compete in a Democratic Party primary, her career would be over. So running as an independent is the only shot that she has if she wants to stay in the Senate. Now, she is pretending as if she's doing this for altruistic reasons and really, you know, she she's tired of the polarization and all this bullshit, but we know what this is about. But listen to the way she explains it to uh, Jake Tapper. She's so phony. I know this is really hard for lots of folks, especially in D.C., but what's important to me is to not be to not be tethered by the partisanship that dominates politics today. And I think Americans are tired of it. I think Arizonans are tired of it. What I'm interested in is working on all those issues that you just mentioned that I care deeply about and that I believe my constituents care deeply about. But I wanna work on them in a way that is productive, that is free from the trappings of the pull of the political system. You know, the national political parties have pulled our politics farther to the edges than I've ever seen. I want to remove some of that kind of that poison from our politics. You are the poison, Kirsten Sinema. But she pretends as if polarization is the worst issue ever in D.C. Polarization is an issue that is likely going to continue to be a problem so long as we have one of two parties being undemocratic and fascistic. But really, the true issue that she's not addressing is corruption in D.C. This is why D.C. is so dysfunctional. As CNBC reports, even before Cinema was elected to the Senate in 2018, she supported private equity investors as a member in the House of Representatives. In 2016, Cinema said the industry provided billions of dollars each year to Main Street businesses, according to the New York Times. Cinema won a coveted seat on the powerful Senate Banking Committee and made quick work of networking with and raising donations from the industry she would oversee. Since the start of the 2018 election cycle, she's raked in at least $2 million from the securities and investment industry, outraising Senate Banking Chairman Sherrod Brown's $770,000 in industry donations over the same time, according to the Federal Election election commission data analyzed by the nonpartisan campaign finance watchdog open secrets employees at private equity firms colberg kravis roberts the carlisle group and apollo global management donated more than ninety five thousand dollars combined to cinema from the 2018 election through the current 2022 election cycle according to campaign finance data so she's just corrupt period we don't have to speculate further than that She's been bought and paid for by the industries that she's representing. So she talks about Arizonans being her constituents, but we all know who her true constituents are. And let's be very clear about something. Most lawmakers in Congress 
are corrupt. They're very, very corrupt. They're bought and paid for by their corporate and billionaire donors. But the difference is that Kirsten Sinema is so brazen about her corruption. She's so in your face about her corruption that people see through it. They see that she's not representing them after they voted her in office. She's exclusively representing Wall Street and rich people, private equity firms. So when you're that corrupt, sometimes it backfires. Not often in the United States, but sometimes you get a little bit too in your face with corruption, a little bit too bold, and your constituents just don't like it. So that's why she's in the position that she's in currently, where she has no choice but to leave the Democratic Party because she would not survive a Democratic Party primary. So she can try to pretend as if this is about some principled move. But really, this is about politics. This is about her trying to save her own ass after she pissed off the people who got her into power in the first place. So her only hope at this point is to bank on enough independents and Republicans and hope that they can propel her to victory. But I don't know that that's going to pan out too well for her, because if you are a Republican voter, would you go for the Republican light or the real thing in Arizona, a purple state? Odds are, I think that they would probably end up supporting the actual Republican. But what she can do, however, is play spoiler in Arizona and fuck over the Democratic Party. So that's where we're at. Since the Democratic Party rejected her, her constituents rejected her, now what she's going to do is pay them back by sinking the Democratic Party's chances of retaining that seat in 2024. So she is the most slimy, most disgusting, most disingenuous, most phony politician in the United States. And nobody should believe a single word that she's saying because she is the definition of a fake sellout politician.